So next I wanna talk about what are called geometric series, which are some of the easiest series to analyze. And geometric series are gonna be series that look like you have something to the n power. Okay, typically we start at zero, but you can start at one, you can start at 17, whatever. So geometric series are gonna be series that look like this. So you have x to the n is little n goes from zero to infinity. And we actually have already dealt with this before. The one series that we dealt with previously was one over two to the n. If you think about that, that's really one half to the n. And so that's one of the reasons why it was so easy to work with is that it's a geometric series. Now these are called geometric series because the sequence x of n as n goes from zero to infinity, this is just gonna be one x, x squared and so on. This is called a geometric progression. Okay, so that's called the geometric progression because each time you're multiplying by this value x. Um, and so this is a geometric progression and therefore these are called geometric series. Now, what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to try and come up with a formula for the partial sums. So we're gonna have to try to find the formula for S of capital N, which is the sum as little n goes from one to capital N of X to the N, okay? And so that's our goal. Um, and I'm sorry, not as uh, N goes from one to infinity, um, not, not starting at one, starting at zero. And then we're ending at capital N, not at infinity. So what I wanna do then is let's see if we can come up with the formula here. So this is one plus X plus X squared and we stop when we get to X to the capital N. And there's a nice trick that we can use here. If that's S sub N, then think about what would happen if we multiply all of these terms by X. So X times capital S sub N is gonna be, well, one times X is X and X times X is X squared. And x squared times x will be x cubed and so on. And so we're taking each of these terms multiplying by x. So we're gonna now have the sum of x all the way up to x to the capital N plus one. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the difference of these two quantities. And so S sub capital N minus x times S sub N well, that's gonna be one plus X plus X squared all the way up to X to the capital N minus the other values, X plus X squared all the way up to X to the capital N plus one. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna distribute the negative over that last parentheses, and then we're gonna see what cancels. So this is gonna end up being one plus X plus X squared all the way up to X to the capital N minus X minus X squared minus X cubed all the way up to X to the capital N plus one. So we're subtracting all of those terms. And what ends up happening is that everything cancels except for the first and last term. So the X's are gonna cancel. The X squareds are gonna cancel the X cubes are gonna cancel, okay? I didn't write it in both parts, all the way up to the X to the N term. And then we're literally left with just the first term and the last term. So it turns out that this is gonna be one minus X to the capital N plus one. So S sub N minus X times S sub N is equal to one minus X to the N plus one. And this is a nice trick because what we can do now is we can factor out the S sub N on the left. We're left with one minus X. And now we can just divide both sides by one minus X. And we have our formula. I do have to say that this trick does not work when X is one, but let's go back and let's think about what happens when X is one. 
is a silly thing to do when x is one, because if x is one, then x to the n is one each time. And if x is one, then this sum is just gonna be capital N plus one. There's no need for coming up with this formula. We can just find it directly. So we actually don't even need the formula when x is equal to one, okay, which is good. Um, now what we need to do is we have a formula for the part, the sequence of partial sums. We need to take the limit of that sequence to figure out the convergence or divergence of the original series. So the limit, let me write this a little better, the original series, so as little n goes from zero to capital N of x to the n is gonna be the limit of the sequence of partial sums as we've talked about. So this is the sum as little n goes from zero to capital N of x to the n. And we just came up with a formula for this sequence of partial sums. Remember what S of n was, was exactly this sum. So this sum, we just came up with the formula for it. This is gonna be one minus X to the capital N plus one over one minus X. And so what we have to do now is we have to think about different values of X and trying to figure out when does this converge? Uh, when does this value diverge? Okay. And we're ignoring X equals one. We already know what's going to happen when X is equal to one. Um, and I'll, I'll fill that in again in a second. So what we need to do is we need to take a small break and we need to think about what's the limit as I don't want to use n again, let's just use um, k. So what's the limit as k goes to infinity of t to the k? Okay, and that's basically what we have. We have uh, x to the n plus one, but the capital N is going to infinity. So whether you want to put in x to the n or x to the n plus one, I don't really care. All right, so Let's think about what's gonna happen here. And we're gonna to have to worry about this in a few different regimes, okay? So the first place where we're gonna to have to worry about this is let's think about what happens if the absolute value of T is strictly less than one. So in other words, T is between negative one and one, like negative three fourths or one half or E over pi or something like that, but just some value between negative one and one. It turns out that when I take something like one half to the K and then I let K go to infinity, every time you multiply by a half, this is gonna get smaller and it's gonna to go to zero. Okay, so this limit's gonna be zero if the absolute value of T is between, um, if the absolute value of T is less than one, if T is between negative one and one. If T is equal to one, this is a special case. If T is equal to one, then t to the k is just one. So this limit's gonna be equal to one. And if the absolute value of t is bigger than one, or if t is equal to negative one, um, then this is gonna diverge. So if t is equal to negative one, this is negative one to the k, we talked about that alternating sequence, that's gonna diverge because it never settles down. Doesn't go to infinity, doesn't go to minus infinity, just never settles down. And if t is bigger than one, like two to the k or something, that's gonna go to infinity. And if you have negative two to the k, then um, you're gonna have, it's gonna go simultaneously to positive and negative infinity. So it oscillates and the terms get bigger and bigger. So it, it never settles down on a particular value, okay? So it diverges. Um, unless the absolute value of T is strictly less than one or if T is equal to one. Okay, so that's the limit of T to the K as K goes to infinity. Now, think about what this means for us. We are not allowing X to be one. We, we talked about X can't be one. That automatically rules out this middle case. So what's gonna happen is that when we let capital N go to infinity, this X to the N plus one is either gonna be zero or the limit's not gonna exist. And it's gonna be zero uh, if the absolute value of X is less than one, okay? 
and then the series diverges. So the series diverges otherwise. I do have to just mention one small caveat here just to make sure everything's uh, all very nicely, neatly wrapped up. Why does the series diverge when X is equal to one? We didn't actually talk about that. We talked about why the series diverges when the absolute value of X is bigger than one, like when X is three or negative two or something, or when X is equal to minus one. We talked about divergence then. That's because you get this oscillating pattern. But when X is equal to one, it turns out what's going to happen here when X is equal to one is that you're adding up one infinitely many times. And this is going to get arbitrarily large, right? If you add up one a hundred times, you get a hundred. And if you add up one a billion times, you get a billion. And so the more and more terms you add, the larger this value is going to be. And this series is going to diverge to infinity. So when X is equal to one, you still get divergence. And so it turns out, and this is such an important thing that I'm going to write it again. This is basically everything you need to know about geometric series. Geometric series converge. And not only do we know that they do converge, but we know what they converge to. They converge to one over one minus X when the absolute value of X is less than one. And uh, so these converge for uh, values of X between negative one and one and they diverge otherwise. The series diverges. If the absolute value of X is uh, greater than or equal to one. Okay, so even when X is equal to positive one, we just talked about, or when X is negative one, which we talked about before, uh, or when the absolute value of X is bigger than one, like two or uh, even 1.01. .01. Okay, anything bigger than one will make the series diverge. Okay, so that's geometric series. I want to also show you one other way that we could have figured out the value of the original series. Okay, so let's think about, let's look at the sum of one over two to the n is n goes from zero to infinity. The way that I define geometric series is slightly different from the book. I like to define geometric series as being series starting at zero. I find that to be a much more natural place. And so if we want to talk about the series, one over two to the n, starting at n equals zero, what we just proved is that, well, let me write it just to justify that this is okay. But this is one half to the n. One half is between negative one and one. Its absolute value is one half, it's less than one. And therefore this is going to be a convergent series. And not only that, we know that it converges to one over one minus one half. And one minus one half is one half. And one over one half is two. So why is this series two, but the original series that we talked about one? Well, it's because they're slightly different series. The original series that we talked about started at n equals one. This series starts at n equals zero. And so what we can do is we can take this series which is the sum from zero to infinity of one over two to the n. And we can think about it as the sum of all the values of one over two to the n as n goes from zero to infinity. So it's one over two to the zero plus one over two to the first plus one over two squared plus one over two cubed. Let me just write it as uh, one over two squared, one over two cubed, one over two to the fourth and so on. Okay, and the series that we had before was everything except for that first term. And this series is what we had when we talked about the sum of one over two to the n as n goes from one to infinity. And that we said was one. Okay, so this series here, we said converges to one. And therefore this original series converges to one plus one or two. So everything's totally consistent here. I just wanted to uh, kind of justify this. Now, if we wanted to evaluate, um, I don't want the green color here, but if we wanted to evaluate, say the sum of negative two thirds as n goes from zero to infinity, 
So what this is, is this is going to be one minus two thirds plus four ninths minus eight over 27 and so on. The absolute value of negative two thirds is two thirds, which is less than one. And therefore this is a convergent series. And this converges to one over one minus our X, which in this case is negative two thirds. And so it turns out that when you compute this, you end up with one over one plus two thirds is five thirds. And so this is gonna end up being some number, um, well, this is gonna end up being three fifths, okay? So if you were to take these values and plug them into your calculator, the more and more terms that you were to add to the series, the closer you would get to three fifths, okay? And therefore um, the series is gonna converge to three fifths. Okay, so that's really all there is to say about uh, geometric series. We will mess with this a little bit. We can do things like um, if we were to um, say, take one, oh, we already did one half. So let me just change this. Say uh, we were to do um, negative one over pi, okay, is n goes from uh, say one to infinity or two to infinity. We could think of this as the sum from zero to infinity. So that's the sum of all the values where n goes from zero to infinity minus the zeroth term and the n equals first term. So when n is equal to zero, we get negative one over pi to the zero, which is one. And when n is equal to one, we get negative one over pi. Okay, so we'd have a, a, we're subtracting one minus one over pi because that's the n equals zero and n equals first term. And that's how we get this series starting at two. And so we know that this geometric series converges because one over pi is something like one third. That's less than one. This is gonna converge to one over one minus negative one over pi. And then we're gonna subtract the other values. So minus one, uh, minus one over pi. And that's gonna be whatever it is. Basically we get uh, one over, uh, let's see, one plus one over pi is pi plus one over pi. And then we're subtracting one and we're adding one over pi. Um, and then simplify that as much as you like, but that's pi over pi plus one, minus one plus one over pi. And again, if you were to play around with the calculator, add all those values from two to infinity, you get a number that approaches whatever this number is, pi over pi plus one minus one plus uh, one over pi, okay? And so uh, that's uh, kind of where we're at here. Now, there's a few other series that are gonna have uh, some nice tricks to them, but I wanna give them their own video, again, just to make it a little bit easier for you to find them. So we'll do that in the next video.